It's not Israel that has to be blamed for it. It is the Hamas terrorism. I am very scared that this might be the future of India if we don't do something about it. I have been a refugee in my own country in India. The people who came here from London, they haven't posted anything on social media because they'll be targeted. Israel does not have the right to defend even when Hamas attacked on Israeli grounds. My mission, it got a reason on why I need to do something for the Hindus from Pakistan. And I was in solidarity here because we have common enemies. We have had three consecutive attacks in India. Our brothers and sisters in India have not been talking about it as much as they spoke about all eyes on Rafa. It's basically a global PR management stunt. Is an Indian death less meaningful or less important for them than uh, you know people dying in Gaza or elsewhere in the world? That is the kind of hypocrisy. You know. Now we need to also be really good at documenting our history and remembering it and forwarding it and doing something about it because history is the greatest teacher. How United Nations has completely failed in the last many decades to define terrorism. That's a Kashmiri Pandit, this is an Indian Jew and that's a Hindu Sindhi, right? Yeah. We're all here together in Israel. This guy rescues Hindus from Pakistan and documents them. This guy is India's award-winning journalist that talks about terrorism, geopolitics and human rights and has also educated an entire generation about Kashmiri Pandits. Hi, I am Nikhil Chanwani. Hi, I am Aditya Rajkol. And, and we, we are, are here, here to, to support Israel. Israel. But why are they in Israel? You see, Aditya and Nikhil were on a delegation organized by the India-Israel Friendship Club supported by Stand With Us and Israel. It is a solidarity trip for our Indian brothers and sisters from India and UK. This delegation had the opportunity to visit sites in Israel that were attacked by Hamas on October 7th. They also had the opportunity to visit and spend time with heroes of the IDF who have been fighting Hamas and saved hostages in Gaza. But how was their experience? Let's find out. Alright, so today we have Aditya who's come on an Indian delegation. Thank you for telling our story to the world. I have been following your stories and your Twitter and you have been actively covering on ground. I really have to appreciate that with everything that's going on. And I want to say that you had the opportunity to visit the places down south in Israel where Hamas attacked, the Nova Festival grounds and Kibbutz Berry. What were your initial thoughts when you went there? Well, Ravital, thank you so much initially to have me here. It's great to meet you, your family here. You know, this is my third visit to Israel, but uh, this time around we got the experience to first-hand witness Kibbutz Berry. First time I was here in 2015 when I was part of the delegation of the President of India, Pranam Mukherjee. That was the first head of the state visit here. In 2022, I visited all the border areas along with the Israeli Foreign Ministry and IDF. And the places that I had visited, including Kibbutz Peri, Kerem Shalom and all those places, were the same places that were attacked a year later in 2023, on 7th of October. This time around in Kibbutz Peri, it was heartbreaking. It was heart-wrenching to witness stories, meet victims, survivors of this entire attack, mm -hmm. but also see firsthand the kind of destruction, mayhem and I would say a complete massacre that has happened not just in Kibbutz Peri, but all across southern Israel. The kind of death, the kind of mayhem, it's almost that every community, every family has lost someone who is either dead, who is either grievously injured or is abducted. Let's remember that there are more than 100 Israelis, Jews who are still you know, under abduction of the Hamas terrorists across Gaza right now. We pray for their safety, but for the first time we got to witness the destruction, the gutted houses of Kibbutz Berry, how the terrorists really entered and destroyed completely after identification Jews. So the idea was to eradicate, kill and completely annihilate Jews from Israel. That is the ultimate objective of Hamas. And let's remember that Hamas is not a human rights organization. Hamas is a terrorist organization and more than anyone else in the world, the Palestinians need to realize this, that they may have a dream of a two-state solution. They may want a state for themselves. They may want fundamental rights, human rights, as any human would want. But Hamas is not the solution for that. The Hamas is not the elected body that is going to help them democratically elect and have their grievances met. That is the ultimate you know, realization that needs to be there until that doesn't happen. Unfortunately, there'll be death, there'll be bloodshed and destruction. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing that I have to tell you, that I have seen great resilience in the Jewish community out here, not just in Kibbutz Peri, not just in Kerem Shalom, not just in the Southern Israel, but every street corner that I visit in Tel Aviv, every street and alleys of Jerusalem, there is an immense level of courage, determination, above all, courage of conviction that the Israelis really have. 
and I'm moved by that because I come from India, particularly Jammu and Kashmir, where I've suffered immensely the same kind of genocide and ethnic cleansing mm -hmm. by the same kind of Islamist terrorists. And till we challenge the Islamist terrorists, till we stand up to them, mm -hmm. the stand up to the bullies and those who kill us, we won't achieve our goals. So we have today the one and only Nikhil Chandwani. He's the man who rescues Hindu families and girls from Pakistan and documents it. You're doing God's work, I have to say. It's not easy, it's complex, it's risk. There's a lot of funding involved. How do you do it? I self-fund. I have never taken any donation. I don't have an NGO. My family was from Pakistan, 1947. Mm -hmm. It was India only. So my grandfather, he had to migrate to India right. after the partition. It was not ethical. Right. And once he shared the stories of the horrors that people faced over there, mm -hmm. and a lot of other Hindus who still stayed in the village where we used to stay in the past, they shared all the stuff that happened. Right. I decided that since I have the money, I have a good uh, backup in my life, mm -hmm. I should use it. Use it for something good. Of course. And that's what, I guess, ancient cultures teach us. Yeah. Where I'm hinging at, right? I think we all know. Yeah. So you had, just like Aditya, you had the chance to be on an Indian delegation, visit Israel, go to places that were attacked by Hamas. What were your initial thoughts when you saw places like Kibbutz Be'eri and Nova Festival Ground? So, first the Nova Festival. Uh, when we visited there, I was numb. I had tears in my eyes. I was just hurt inside. Because this was the visualization of what my grandparents used to tell me of what happened in Pakistan during 1945 to 1947. So we don't have any documentaries on it. We don't have the photos and visuals of it. Seeing it live here and seeing what happened to those kids mm -hmm. at the festival mm -hmm. early in the morning and they were targeted where they were partying. They were just innocent souls and they were targeted. So mm -hmm. it was very hurtful. I was numb. And once we saw the homes which were burnt. In Kibbutz Berry. Yes. My grandfather, his home was burnt. I see. I'm so sorry. And once I saw over here, again, I just called up my parents. I did a video call with my dad. We both had tears in our eyes. And then my mission, it got a reason, mm -hmm. a visual reason. Mm -hmm and why I need to do something for the Hindus from Pakistan. And I was in solidarity here because we have common enemies. Seeing what the enemy can do, I am very scared that this might be the future of India if we don't do something about it. A lot of countries think that Israel does not have the right to defend even when Hamas attacked on Israeli grounds. What do you have to say to them? You know, one thing that I feel here every time I come here is that, uh, you know, Israelis do not care. Really, you know, they have this immense level of courage and a different kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. I meet 18 and 19 year old IDF soldiers out here who know, who have the clarity of mind that they need to protect their country. This is the battle for survival. They don't have any other option. They have to go out to the battlefield and do whatever is possible to save their nation, to save their families. And that is the kind of determination that perhaps those who are spreading a lot of propaganda against Israel's lack. They are spreading this propaganda that a lot of people are dying in Gaza. I have sympathies with the families who are dying. I, my heart cries because I have been a refugee in my own country in India, where I also feel that a lot of India remained silent or were not told what really happened with the Kashmiri Hindus in Kashmir. Right. Similarly out here, but it's not Israel that has to be blamed for it. It is the Hamas terrorism. It's the Islamic Jihad mm -hmm. that's happening all across Gaza. Right. And they have put an ax on their own feet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by electing Hamas, by not having a democratic government that can engage with the world at large right. and have a peaceful solution to this decades long conflict. So mm -hmm. I think Israel certainly is doing whatever it can mm -hmm. to save its interests. Right. And this is a world where more than shared values there are shared interests. Let's True. face it. True. Uh, India has come in support of Israel mm -hmm. as a close strategic partner mm -hmm. and has condemned terrorism. We stand with the common civilian population of Palestine as well. Right. We believe in a two-state solution, but at the same time, we have been victims of terrorism for more than three decades True. from Pakistan, from groups like lashkar e toiba mm -hmm. jaish e Mohammed and others. We have mm -hmm. terror attacks like the genocide of Kashmiri Hindus. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the kind of terrorism that we have faced all these years. Mm -hmm. And Jews have been suffering the same way. True. So I think it's important that the larger globe realizes that here's a country that has stood all these years because of their resilience, will continue to stay there. The world has to choose today that will they be on the right side of democracy, of a country that is saving their people, you know, they've suffered Holocaust, mm -hmm. 
but they have stood up there, right. they have risen from the ashes right. and will rise again. You mentioned something very interesting, denying. A lot of people are denying that whatever happened on 7th of October is a lie. It's AI generated, which obviously it isn't and we have proof. What do you have to say to people who think this is all a lie and we are just like playing victims, which we are victims of by the way. What do you have to say to them? They need to know that if they are denying, then they are next because this ideology will not stop at Israel. What Israel is facing right now, the Europe will face in the next decade. And when Europe comments about Israel, I have that smirk because they don't have their house in order. Their house is burning and they're commenting about Israel. They're commenting about Palestine. You go to London right now, the people who came here from London, they haven't posted anything on social media because they'll be targeted. Just imagine London, the place that ruled the world, the place that was considered free, mm -hmm. safe. It's not safe anymore. True. And similarly, you go to Italy, you go to Spain, mm -hmm. It's all messed up. So they need to get their house in order. And True. the people who are denying what happened in Israel, mm -hmm. in five to ten years, things will happen the same, the same with them. Yeah. Honestly, again, the history lesson. A lot of people deny genocide. True. Uh, Holocaust also. There were a lot of Holocaust denials as well. Mm -hmm. What happened to them now? They're facing the same thing. True. They're absolutely facing the same thing. So mm -hmm. yes, denial is bad. Mm -hmm. And people who can't see the visuals should come over here. Mm -hmm visit the places mm -hmm. where this thing happened mm -hmm. and they'll know and even after then that uh, they are denying they're not humans we have had three consecutive attacks in india in kashmir and i feel like our brothers and sisters in india have not been talking about it as much as they spoke about all eyes on rafa what do you have to say about that well, there's immense level of hypocrisy, double standards that are visible not just in the celebrities in India, mm -hmm. but all across the globe. Right. It's basically a global PR management stunt. They see whatever will sell with the larger population. They do not see whether morally they are in the right side or not. In this case, particularly, there was uh, you know, an image, all eyes on Rafa, that right. was going viral right. uh, in the Arab world. And that suddenly went viral in India as well. Which is completely AI generated and not true. Yes, it's an AI generated image of so-called camps, etc, etc. And you know, an interesting thing that happened in India was that this was shared by a lot of Bollywood celebrities, singers, actors, etc. A lot of politicians as well. But I was at Rashtrapati Bhavan, that is the president's house in India. Right. And there was a new government swearing in. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was swearing in for the third time. Right. And at that time, I received the first message that there was a terror attack that was happening in Jammu and Kashmir in a place called Riyasi. I have spent a lot of time in Riyasi in my childhood because my relatives were there. And Riyasi isn't a place that, where terror attacks normally happen, at least not in the last many years. Okay. And suddenly, nine people, nine Hindu pilgrims were killed. Again, pilgrims haven't been attacked so much. Last attack happened around 2017 or 18. The Amarnath pilgrims were killed. But this time around, it was a message by Pakistan that the proxy terrorism, the Islamic Jihad continues. We are there. We are going to support them. And terrorism hasn't completely ended, even though there's been Article 370 abrogation in 2019. So right. the hypocrisy is that there was all eyes on Rafa all across Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Riyasi, why were their eyes not on Riyasi? Exactly. Is an Indian death less meaningful or less important for them mm -hmm. than uh, you know, people dying in Gaza or elsewhere in the world? Mm -hmm. That is the kind of hypocrisy. You know, when your own suffer terrorism, mm -hmm. you do not voice their concerns. You do not become their voice, mm -hmm. the voice of the voiceless. Right. But instead, you choose a PR stunt without realizing perhaps even where Rafa is on the global map. My parents were there in Vaishnav Devi when that attack happened. It happened nearby. Right. I was scared. I just called them up. I was in Delhi after this oath taking. Mm -hmm. I just called them up. Once I came to know they were fine. After that, uh, I went on social media mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of people in denial. They just started denying that Islam is dead. We didn't even blame them until then. Right. So this defensive strategy that these people have, the denial that mm -hmm. they have, and a lot of Hindus support them because they have Muslim friends. So that is a dangerous path which people are, uh, you know, following. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, like the education system in India, it is changing now. We have national education policy. Mm -hmm. Because of that, a lot of chapters are added about the partition, about the atrocities, the Hindus face. Right. In different genocides that happened, seven to eight genocides that happened in the past 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. Now Indians also know about uh, the Holocaust. We have a chapter on that. So things are changing. Right. The youth, they need to be interested because Indians are really good at the in STEM. They're good in engineering, they're good in medicine. But now we need to also be really good at documenting our history True. and remembering it and forwarding it and doing something about it because history is the greatest teacher. It is the best teacher you can have. True. And if you True. don't learn from it, you will have the same fate. Yeah. I personally believe that a lot of the generation, doesn't matter which one, I think it's mostly younger millennials and Gen Z have been brainwashed 
Yes. How do you think we can reverse that and change that and encourage them to voice opinions on the right thing that's happening or the true or the most authentic thing that's happening? You know, we are living in a largely divided world today and it's further being divided on the basis of ideologies, right. religions, castes, whatever is possible. We are living in a time when there are two simultaneous global wars that are happening. Russia, Ukraine for more than two years now mm -hmm. and of course Israel and Hamas right. uh, for more than eight months. Right. But we need to realize that there needs to be firstly a global consensus on terrorism. How United Nations has mm -hmm. completely failed in the last many decades mm -hmm. to define terrorism, to have a consensus or a robust mechanism to deal with terrorism, mm -hmm. not at all. Mm -hmm. Not in India, not in you know this part of the world mm -hmm. or anywhere else. And that's why we increasingly see across Europe, right. across United States, even in places like New Zealand, Australia, mm -hmm. lone wolf attacks. Right. You know, you see suddenly people coming in, firing at you know people or using a knife and killing people, ramming their cars mm -hmm. and trucks into common people, civilians, right. without any crime. What's their crime? They say they, it's a jihad. It is something that, you know, they have been told to do as per their religion. That's mm -hmm. not true. You know, the reality is that this is clearly people being brainwashed, radicalized. Mm -hmm. There is more extremism now in UK, in Europe, in Sweden, in mm -hmm. Germany, in France mm -hmm. than any time that there was. Right. The leaders need to realize today what should be the mechanisms. I do not say that blanket ban on refugees, but there needs to be some mechanism to check who you are letting enter in your country because if this is the path of Islamist radicalization that continues, unfortunately we'll see a world where you do not need a Taliban's Afghanistan, Europe will turn into an Afghanistan. Now yesterday you shared a picture with me when you were at the Western Wall. Yes. And you said you had a moment where you were emotional and you also had the opportunity to see the IDF, I wouldn't say graduation, yeah. but the ceremony where the young Israeli kids that are almost between the age of 18 to 20 uh, were taking an oath because now they're going to be drafting to the army officially. What do you have to say about that? I mean, 18 and 20 year olds drafting to the army, we don't come from a culture of, we focus more on academics and career. Yeah. Here it's different. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? Israel is fighting for its survival and uh, they are doing an excellent job with it. I feel a lot of Hindu states, ancient Hindu states in mm -hmm. Pakistan, in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. who are right now victimized, mm -hmm. they need to learn something from it. They need to absolutely learn something about it. In Pakistan, there are 90 lakh Hindus who are left and still they're suffering. They are not doing anything about it. And there's always a video or two of a girl being converted, being ab abducted. So they can learn from Israel and there can be a good primary case study on how Israel protects its own, mm -hmm. how the Israelis protect themselves coming together, True. the unity, the happiness, everybody on the street is smiling. Right. They are not rolling their eyes. In Israel, they're smiling and they know how to defend their country. So that's beautiful. And mm -hmm. secondly, the wall, that was a savior. There I found peace. I went there, we respected all the customs, we went inside. I also wrote a letter, that yeah. small letter, yeah. I hid it in the wall. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, at the Western Wall, you can write your wish in a, in a chit on a paper and you can put it in the crevices of the Western Wall and that's exactly yes. what you did. Absolutely. Of course, don't share it with us because it's your wish, yeah. but this is what he did. Oh, we don't have to share it with anyone? No, you can. I, I mean, can, it's your right? choice. Yeah. You have a website called, now you know, he has written an amazing article on the similarities of yeah. Judaism and Hinduism. You should definitely read it. I'm also going to link it in my description. So go ahead. I have to say as a Jewish person, I feel like we are fighting this war online and offline by ourselves. It's us against the world. But I know a lot more people are supporting us, but they're not being vocal. And you being a representative from India, I know our Indian brothers and sisters have been supporting us. So why do you think India should be supporting Israel? And what can we do about this collaboration and how can we take this forward? You know, India is perhaps not just in that part of the world, but perhaps globally the only secular country left now. We are perhaps as Hindus the most liberal of the lot. We accept everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a warm handshake and a hug. We believe in the philosophy of Vasudeva Kutumbukam, that means world is one family. Mm -hmm. You saw an incredible G20 that happened in India that became a festival of sorts with every street and corner all across the country almost celebrating. Never in the history of G20 have you seen such kind of a festival uh, really taking place. Mm -hmm. In Israel, again, you know, you have shared values, not just shared interests. Right. You obviously have a strategic collaboration between the two. Israel has helped India with defense equipment, with drones, with a lot of trade and agriculture mm -hmm. uh, that is only flourishing. Recently, after the war, mm -hmm. a decision was taken to take a lot of laborers and migrant workers, skilled labor, mm -hmm. really from India to Israel. I am being told that already 20,000 of them mm -hmm. have arrived here and that's incredible. 
you know, music. on a lighter note, you know, a lot of people from Bihar and UP are here. And I expect that, you know, uh, there will be Indian festivals that will be celebrated here, not just Diwali and Holi, but Chhat Puja and others on Tel Aviv Beach. Why not? We can have perhaps, uh, you know, a lot of Liti Chokha, uh, Puchkas and Indian food that uh, Israelis already love. Really? I've been uh, looking at the streets in Israel, uh -huh. a lot of Indian restaurants, a lot of Indian imagery, Ganesha, Lord Shiva, etc. Uh, on the streets. And we already know for years together, ideal soldiers after their mission come to India at least for three to six months or perhaps a year. Yes. They go to Himachal, they go to Goa, they go to Ladakh, mm -hmm. they travel all across and they love it. They do. So this is that I have seen in the last nine years since I've been visiting Israel, that there's immense level of love for India. True. You know, at every street corner, their eyes really brighten up, light up when they hear about India. So one thing that I would end with is that it does not matter if you are alone. If you have the courage of conviction, if you have in you that you are on the path of truth, mm -hmm. you are trying to save humanity, mm -hmm. then even if you are alone, you will lead yourself to victory. You know, we as Hindus in Kashmir, the minority, have suffered this. I remember a time when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, around 18 years old, and mm -hmm. I started a movement for Roots in Kashmir for Kashmiri Pandits, mm -hmm. globally. And even Indian media, international media used to ignore us completely. Yeah. And they used to laugh when I would say that Article 370 abrogation will take place and no separatism will be allowed. And post 2017, 2019, we have seen drastic changes in Kashmir. True. So even if it takes 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, if you have resolve and courage of conviction mm -hmm. and you have the determination to save planet, save humanity, save your religion mm -hmm. and community and humanity, nothing can stop you. That's an awesome message. And one last message for Israelis in our Jewish community who are watching you and appreciate your support. Would you like to say something to them? I would say that I love Israel completely. I mean, Israel Kai. And Jai Hind. Jai Hind, Jai Israel. We are the one seventh of the world's population, and one billion of Indians they actually support Israel, Ra defend Israel. We had rallies in Mumbai, in Delhi, even in my city of Nagpur, in support of Israel. Mm -hmm. There were Palestinian rallies as well, which had 500 or 1,000 people. In Israeli rallies, we had 5,000, 4,000 people. So wow. we are supportive of that, but we support in a local language, in Hindi, Marathi, Bengali. Mm -hmm. The Indian media houses, like 60% of them support Israel. 60% of India TV channels, they are supportive of Israel. Mm -hmm. You go on social media and read the comment section. Mm -hmm. I posted two posts about Israel. Mm -hmm. And you go in the comment section and you will see 90% of the Indians in support of Israel. I see. And why is it happening? Because ancient cultures understand ancient cultures. True. And we both are the oldest surviving civilizations. Mm -hmm. And we have been together in the worst of days. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the future. That's how we survive. When we partner and we ensure that the people who want to eradicate us, mm -hmm. are, they fail. And in terms of partnership, Aditya can come in the frame. I have to say, that's a Kashmiri Pandit, this is an Indian Jew and that's a Hindu Sindhi, right? Yeah. We are all here together in Israel talking about this because I don't think this has ever happened before. Have this? Never. Never. So this is an example of a collaboration and this is just the beginning. There's so much more to do slowly but truly and I really have to say thank you for making thank the time. You. By the way, they had a very busy schedule. They made sure they made time for me so that we can spend time together and talk about their experiences and I've also now have two brothers and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.